Who the hell is Black Swan? Hello, Nando Fandos. Oh, we're not doing that. Hello, fans of Marvel Snap, but maybe also just fans of Marvel Comics who've always wanted to know who this character who, you know, I'd never heard of before I started researching this video is. There's a character who is going to be the focus of the next battle pass in Marvel Snap. That is, I would say, perhaps, as deep cut as any deep cut character in Marvel Snap has ever been. She's a very confusing backstory that is strangely relevant to the current Marvel Cinematic Universe and also in Marvel Snap she has an interesting ability that almost works. But then when you think about it a little bit, it might be one of the worst pairings between a comic character and a card in the entire game. And I'll explain why. So this character Black Swan showed up in the Black Order season. First of all, Black Order is not always the name of this team. In the comics they're actually called the Cull Obsidian. You may be going, hey, wait, that's a member of the team, the big strong guy. Yeah, in the comics, he's called Black Dwarf. We'll get to it because I think I kind of see why they changed the name. But in the comics, they are either called the Black Order or the Cull of Sidian. She's a member of that team. You'll see her in comics fighting alongside all the characters you would recognize from the movies, Proxima Midnight, Corvus Glaive, all those guys, and maybe some characters you wouldn't associate with Thanos, but because of the story that she comes from do make sense. However, putting her in the Black Order season, while it technically makes sense, it also kind of doesn't because that's not really what she's for. She first appeared in New Avengers Volume 3, Issue 1, written by Jonathan Hickman with art by Steve Epting, Rick Magyar, Frank Dramata, and Joe Caramanga. So if you recognize that first name, Jonathan Hickman, he's the person in charge of many big successful Marvel Comics relaunches. The X-Men's Krakoa era was all Hickman. This New Avengers, all Hickman. The Fantastic Four that everybody loves, all Hickman. And at least those two, the Fantastic Four and this New Avengers run, are very connected because Mr. Fantastic is on both teams. Now, really quickly, and this is a little complicated, but I think it's important to understand in case you want to read these, because I think they're good books. Jonathan Hickman is one of the best writers working today. Marvel's lucky to have him. His books are frequently complicated, and they can be confusing. For instance, his X-Men books tend to feature lots of graphs, sometimes depicting stuff that is integral to understanding the plot, and sometimes depicting stuff that seems pretty superfluous. But it's nice, and it's always fun. Now, the Infinity event that I have the comic for, this was part of this Jonathan Hickman Avengers thing. There were three books going at once. There was Avengers, New Avengers, and Infinity. And I will show you at the back of every issue of one of them was a little chart that told you which ones you needed to read in which order and like you could kind of see how this could be a little much. I understand when people are like I like manga and I go to read comics and it's like you have to start here and then read this one and this one and this one it, it gets tricky. So what was happening during this series in the Avengers comic the team led by Captain America, Hawkeye, Captain Marvel, all those guys your usual Avengers minus a couple which we'll get to we're all doing this big story with this race of guys that were coming to destroy all of humanity and all of the universe and stuff. They were these evil robots. It's not incredibly important. On the other side, the new Avengers team was the Illuminati. They had been reformed. Like if you remember, the last season was Planet Hulk. They send the Hulk into space. He comes back, fights them all in World War Hulk. And then I think they got disbanded. They didn't really, I think after that, they were kind of like, maybe we should put this on hold. This is not going incredibly well. And the Illuminati is similar to the Illuminati we see in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Some of the characters are a little bit different. The usual members are Black Bolt, Iron Man, Mr. Fantastic, Doctor Strange, Professor Xavier, Namor, and Black Panther. Now between that first story and this new one, Professor Xavier died, so Beast took over in his spot, and that was your new Illuminati. They actually invited Captain America to join, and they were like, here's what we're gonna do. And Captain America was like, absolutely not, and they erased his memory and then made him not part of the team anymore. But this story, what the new Avengers and the Avengers are doing, is all about incursions. And that is the big word in Marvel Multiverse right now, the MCU. The incursions are these events where universes collide and different multiverses have to fight each other probably or something. It's what happened to some of the Earths in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It is one of the calamities that Loki was trying to prevent, although Kang is also kind of related to that. And it does seem like if the Kangs all start fighting, besides the fact that they're all going to kill each other, these incursions are going to start happening, which means just the universes are going to crash into each other and explode. So in this book, the Illuminati forms and like something's up, there's something called incursions, we gotta worry about that. They don't know what to do, they build some weapons and stuff and they go to fight the first incursion, like a, another Earth just shows up in the sky and they have to deal with that. The person that shows up with that Earth is a character named Black Swan. She has a, a actual name, doesn't get mentioned a lot, sometimes Thanos brings it up and you're like, who is that? And you're like, oh right, we, we don't call her that. Character's name is Yabat 
Uman Turu, and she is from Earth 1365. So this is Black Swan. I would say the purpose she serves in this book can best be described by this analogy. Is that what these are called? I don't know what these are. Silver Surfer is to Galactus what Black Swan is to Incursions. She's not like being trained and led by the Incursions. It's not her job. However, she is pretty much the herald of the Incursions. She shows up at this first one and gets beaten by the Avengers, destroys the Earth she was leaving, so it's like their Earth gets to survive. If one of the Earths is destroyed, that means the other one survives, so that's where it becomes this like, oh, can we destroy this sentient world to save our own, and we have to figure out another way. They capture Black Swan, who is like a super-powered person. She looks just like a woman with bangs and white skin and white hair and sometimes red eyes. She does laser beams, she can make force fields, she can fly, has super strength, stuff like that. And this is worth mentioning, there are two Black Swans in Marvel Comics. One is a character introduced in the Deadpool run from 2002. He doesn't really matter. He has no relation to this character. We're going to be talking about the woman with white skin and white hair. And like, it's you'd never mix the two up if you saw them. And I don't think he's come back since, whereas she has remained a somewhat important character. The Illuminati is able to imprison her and they ask her, like, what the hell is that? And she goes, oh, these are incursions. You guys are not going to be OK. You're all going to die. You can't win. There's an evil God that's coming that's going to get you all. And you got to just make peace with that because you can't stop him. She's like, so she's not working for the incursions, but she is this character that comes up to say, like, there's going to be a big event that you guys have to figure out how to deal with. She's not helpful. She's quite nihilistic. She's got this attitude that's like, I don't even care. You know, you guys have to make peace with the fact that you're all going to explode and your earth is going to die. And it sucks, but that's what it is. It's revealed that she has this very convoluted backstory where she's the only survivor of her Earth. She was taken in by a group of people called Black Swans that are kind of survivors from their Earths that work together under this God guy who we don't see. And she seems to know something about him. It's like he's not who he says he is. But she doesn't say too much else. She also hates Doctor Strange for reasons that will become apparent. And if you're hearing this story and you're like, this God character is like one of three or four guys, right? Like that, that would be this in the Marvel comic stories. It's like, yeah, it's one of them. Uh, might not be exactly the one you'd expect, but it's someone you are familiar with. So Black Swan helps the Illuminati save their planet. She basically tells them what an incursion is, and very importantly, she gives them a machine. Well, she doesn't give them a machine. Mr. Fantastic has already built this machine, but he's not using it for this. She's like, you turn that machine on, you can use it to see other Earths and other incursions, because there's all kinds of guys that are coming, and you got to know who's what and how to deal with them. That is the power she has. It's like this giant MRI machine that Mr. Fantastic has. She has that, but like, be really really tiny in her eyes so she can see other universes and other incursions which is a good power for exactly what she's doing and not much else eventually this guy thanos gets involved in the story because of his son it doesn't really matter the black order is there and the black order you're probably like oh right the guys from the movies and thanos you're like oh yeah this really historical you know comics figure from the 80s the infinity gauntlet saga it's one of the most popular marvel comics events it's that cover you guys all remember it's that you know, Infinity Gauntlet, or it's the other one they have over there, but you, you know what it looks like. And you figure, oh, these are his lieutenants, these were in that story. No, 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 no. They show up around here. They are also brand new. And I think this is an interesting, like, almost misconception about the Black Order. They have not been around for very long, not more than 20 years. They're characters that were created basically to just give Thanos some field generals. They don't have a lot of defined history. And Black Swan, when Thanos starts out, the story is not working with him. However, Thanos also gets beaten by the new Avengers and imprisoned alongside Black Swan and a Terex from another universe. It's not important, but he is like frozen in amber with Proxima Midnight holding Corvus Glaive's glaive and Corvus Glaive has been killed. However, as we will talk about in a future video, you can't kill Corvus Glaive unless you destroy his glaive, which is why it's so silly that in the Avengers movie, he is killed with his glaive. It's like if there is one thing you should not be able to do, it is kill him with that weapon. But anyway, because of that, the Avengers don't realize that Thanos is going to escape once this guy regrows and is able to break out of the prison. And when he breaks out, that is when the Cabal is formed. This is Thanos, Proxima Midnight, Corvus Glaive, Black Swan, Terax, Maximus, and Namor. He is at this point like, you know what, screw it. My guys aren't killing enough universes, but somebody's got to do it. And I'm going to do it because I'm no more and I'm so cool. Black Swan works with them for a little bit, gets banished to another universe. Secret Wars happens and that all kind of ends. And then 
Black Swan's kind of reset. Now there's no more incursion stuff. What's she going to do? So she joins up with Proxima Midnight and starts just working for people. They work for Hela. They try to resurrect Thanos. It doesn't really work. They work for the Grandmaster a little bit. They work for the Collector for a little bit. And they become this like group of roving mercenaries. So the Black Order is led by Corvus Glaive. And it's Proxima Midnight, Black Dwarf, Ebony Maw, and Black Swan. And she just joins up with this team because she doesn't seem to have anything better to do. She fits right in because she's all about killing. And she's even got Black in her name. Like all of them do. Like Obsidian and Ebony and all that stuff. Because they're all so scary. And they go and do missions and do big fights against the Avengers. She's not an incredibly consequential character. I believe I've read every comic she's in. And it's not all that many. Like I said, she's in this new Avengers, Avengers Infinity Run. She's in another Avengers run after that with the Grandmaster. She's in a Black Order comic. She gets her own issue. So that's kind of how important she is. Like Corvus Glaive, the leader of the Black Order, gets a background issue. And so does she. They try to get Thor's hammer when they're working for Hela. They, and they're all just kind of bummed about the whole thing. They don't like working for a general. They like killing and they like being mercenaries and having fun in whatever it is they do. But they don't feel like they have a really strong sense of purpose. So a lot of their stories, especially when Black Swan is a part of this team, are about them just kind of doing stuff and going, is this making us happy? Kind of. All right, let's keep doing this for a little bit. Eh, I don't really enjoy this anymore. I don't like working for him. Let's go try to find something else. As of right now, like February 2024, I do not know where this character is. I think she's just like out there somewhere in the universe doing whatever. I think she might become important again because as the MCU and comics do tend to kind of sync up when something big is happening, I could see her being important in an incursion story. There were rumors that Anya Taylor-Joy was going to play a silver surfer who was a woman in some Fantastic Four movie story thing. I would, there were so many versions of that. Like it could be just regular old Norm Rad. It could be the Olympian character who turned into the silver surfer who was also a woman. Or it could be Nova, Frankie Ray, another character who is one of Galactus's more significant heralds. And I would have to assume is like the highest profile woman on that group. All of those make sense. However, if you wanted to do a character like Silver Surfer and have this character show up in the Fantastic Four movie before Secret Wars and start talking about the big threat that's coming, I think Black Swan is the character that should be. Now, this isn't me saying I think that's who Anya Taylor-Joy is playing. I'm not even sure she's in the movie. This was something that was rumored a while ago. However, she does have all white skin too. So if someone said like, yeah, it's a character, they're all white and they show up and say the danger is coming in Marvel Comics to the Fantastic Four. If you heard that, you'd be like, oh, they're talking about the Silver Surfer. But in reality, if we're doing an incursion story, that's what Black Swan should be doing. And they could do that with a lot of other characters the same way that kind of the Hulk is the messenger in Infinity War who shows up at Doctor Strange's house. Dr. Strange's house, the Sanctum Sanctorum. I mean, it is his house. It's where he lives. So like you could do that with any character. You could have Thor be the guy who is the messenger or someone from a completely different universe. It could be the Silver Surfer from those Fantastic Four movies that nobody likes that now we look back on and we go, oh, those were okay. But I could see a world where that character that Anya Taylor-Joy is playing is a black swan who like, let's say the Fantastic Four go through a bunch of different multiverses or something. And they, when they get out of there, they find Earths that are incursioning and they capture Black Swan, they save the Earths and they go to the regular Marvel Universe with her. And she's like, there's going to be a Kang Dynasty, whatever we're calling that movie now, that's going to lead to Secret Wars. And it's a real big deal. You got to worry about it. Also, she just kind of looks like Anya Taylor-Joy. Like if I were casting Anya Taylor-Joy as a character, I don't think it's that far off from what Black Swan looks like. Now, this character is in Marvel Snap. She is a three cost, five power she wasn't always, but this is apparently what she's getting released into the game as, which people are like, that's pretty high stat line for someone who is just a no downsides card. Her card text reads, on reveal, until the end of next turn, your one cost cards cost zero. So it's pretty clear what they're doing with this card and where they got that from. She's a member of the Black Order. Black Order works for Thanos. In Marvel Snap, the whole purpose of Thanos is to get those Infinity Stones out, to use them to control the board and, you know, keep your opponent on their toes and put all six out so then your Thanos power gets doubled to 20 or whatever. Now that all makes sense. However, like I said, she is not on the Black Order the whole time they exist and they are not with Thanos the whole time he's been doing stuff. When the Black Order shows up in the beginning of this Hickman story with Corvus Glaive, Proxima Midnight, Ebony Maw, Black Dwarf, and Supergiant, they are after the characters that do have the Infinity Stones or gems. So technically they are searching for Infinity Stones. However, they're after something else that's like Thanos' ulterior motive. By the time Black Swan joins the Black Order, they are not doing Infinity Stone stuff anymore. In fact, as far as I can tell, in all of the stories she's been in, 
She's never been after the Infinity Stones. She's working as a bounty hunter trying to get things like Stormbreaker or some guy or her and the Black Order are playing a part in a game between the Grandmaster and the Challenger trying to collect pyramoids. But as far as I can tell, this specific character is never after the Infinity Stones. In fact, there's a comic called Star. It was a spin-off of Captain Marvel where there's this a woman who became a Captain Marvel villain because she got the reality stone in her chest and kind of, you know, she lost it and kind of was like, oh, should I be a hero? But Captain Marvel killed me, so I hate her so much, I gotta fight her, whatever. The Black Order are just aimlessly kind of going like, what should we do? I don't know what to do, you guys. Let's just hang out until we can figure that out. They go to Earth, find this woman, and they're like, oh, man, she's an Infinity Stone. We should probably get her if Thanos comes back. And Black Swan is the one that's like, eh, do we really want to, though? Are we, is that bringing us joy? Maybe we could just not do that and go do our own thing. And yes, she does try to capture Star, but she's also the character that's like, let's just, let's just bail. Let's just go have fun. And they do. So not only is Black Swan the only member of the Black Order that I could find, again, I think I've read every comic she's been in that was never actively seeking out the Infinity Stones. She is the member of the Black Order who convinced the Black Order not to look for Infinity Stones anymore. So I think it's really funny that they gave her this card because there's so many other characters who have tried to get the Infinity Stones before tried to use them, right? Adam Warlock has tried to use the Infinity Stones. Nebula, Gamora, Black Panther wielded the Infinity Stones in the Secret Wars event in a very cool way. But in Marvel Snap, the character most associated with putting the Infinity Stones on the board is the character in the comics who never really wanted to have anything to do with them. I think that's funny. And I do think, and we'll get to it in the next videos, because the other members of the Black Order have powers that do kind of match what they do in a way that I think is smart. So I don't think there's another member of the Black Order where I'm like, oh, I wish Corvus Slave had this instead of that, because he is the general, so he's the one who would be the most interested in getting the Infinity Stones, because I think what they gave him is pretty cool. The character who I would give this to is probably Ebony Maw, but he's already in the game doing something else, so you can't do that with him. That brings up the question, if I could give Black Swan a new card, like, power, what would it be? I was thinking of two. And the main thing is, she knows about the incursions, that's the most important thing about her, she's from another universe, and her eyes give her the power to directly see into the history of other universes and see their incursions. So it would be one of two things. And neither of these, I think, are mechanics they would want to introduce in the game. One, she could be an evil Howard the Duck. She would be a card that you could play that you could tap to reveal the next card your opponent is going to play. So like, it would have to be like a four cost or something. So it's not something that you could put out just in the beginning of the game, but it, you know, maybe, or maybe three costs. Let's say she's a three, two, uh, and she has the ability to show you uh, the opponent's card just because like Black Swan can kind of see the future so you can see into other dimensions Which is kind of what your opponent is in Marvel snap a little bit Maybe and that feels like something that, like I could see them potentially doing just because that's what Howard the duck already does the other power that I would give her that has no like you could never do this in Marvel snap is she would be able to see the result of the last game your opponent played so just you would be able to click on her and see the board, the cards that your opponent had on the board, because that is what she can do. She can look into past incursions and see how worlds ended and learn from that and then go forward and like, you know, hopefully help other worlds. I mean, not help other worlds because she's trying to, uh, you know, I don't really she's kind of like an agent of chaos, especially because when the story that she's in starts, she is like disillusioned with the team she used to be on. But like giving her some sort of special information about what your opponent has already done i think would be kind of cool like she could just be a you see what cards are left in your opponent's deck maybe you know that 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 could be something that would be kind of useful but as far as what black swan has actually done what she can do i think it's that the other thing you could give her she does have a strong force field so you could give her force field powers but like who cares you know it's not that important there aren't very many characters of like significance who she's killed all right so we can't look at her the same way as you would look at someone like i don't know drax if you're writing drax you'd be like oh he can kill cards over 10 power because he killed thanos like you can't do that with her and like i said she hasn't really been around that much. like compare her to the season pass card coming up next month hope summers like hope summers also a relatively new character in the grand scheme of things when you look at how long some of these x-men have been around but has done way more stuff and there is way more history to build off of whereas with black swan like i'm not saying we're scraping the bottom of the barrel i like this character i think it's a cool design i think getting the black order into this game makes sense especially with all the focus the mcu has put on incursions but she is not a character with all that much stuff to draw from so i don't know i understand why they gave her infinity stone powers and i understand why she is the black order member with the least going on so if you had to give them to somebody you already had cool stuff for corvus and proxima midnight 
she makes enough sense. That being said, uh, she technically probably is the one that should not be able to do that. Now, does any of this matter? No. Second dinner, they're, they're doing very well. I think the game's in a pretty good place right now. And I'm excited for this card. The other thing with her, there's only two variants of her in the game currently. And one is this one where she has these big, weird hands. And when you look at that variant and go, oh, I guess that's this character's deal. It's just got big old hands, but she does not have big hands. She has normal hands. So I'm very thankful that the Black Swan variant that comes in the season pass for Marvel Snap's February season is the Inhyuk Lee version that was the cover of Black Order 1 and not the one where she has those big old ostrich hands because especially when I didn't know anything about this character and I just looked at those three variants, I didn't really look at her hands in those other two. So I saw that one. I was like, oh, I guess she's got big old ostrich hands. Good for her. And, you know, that'd be cool. It'd be memorable. And she's got the incursions, like that seems like it's part of it, and the incursions were part of it. Ostrich hands, not so much. So that has been 20 minutes about Black Swan, a character uh, that is not incredibly important, although it could be very important in Marvel Snap and the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward because of all the incursion stuff and leading into Secret Wars. And I would say, if you want to read a little bit more about her, read the Jonathan Hickman New Avengers, Avengers Infinity Run. I think it's called Time Runs Out because it's kind of what it is. It's this countdown, all the incursions where the Illuminati have to figure out what they're going to do to save the world. And if you're like me and you read the Jonathan Hickman Secret Wars from around that time, but you never read this stuff that comes before it, it makes that all a lot more interesting because you understand how it happened and how all these characters got to the places they are. I would say it's a good read. I would say, well, it's not like the best comic ever written, like someone probably say the Hickman Avengers comic is. The Black Order story by Derek Landy, Philip Tan, Mark Deering, Guillermo Ortego, LeBeau Underwood, J. David Ramos, and Clayton Cowles is a fun story and does give you a good sense for who the five members of the team that are on the Black Order at that point are. And issue four, I believe, is the Black Swan issue. So if you just want to read one comic, it's that. It's the Black Order issue four of Black Swan. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to make two other videos this month about the other four cards that are getting introduced. So the other four members of the Black Order besides Black Swan and Ebony Maw, who's already in the game. Next week, I guess, will be Super Giant and Black Dwarf, a.k.a. Call Obsidian. Then after that, we'll do Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight. If you enjoyed this video, share it with people you know that play Marvel Snap or that are in those communities. Get the word out. I've seen a lot of people are enjoying these videos a lot, and I really appreciate that. And I think, because I know lots of people play Marvel Snap, if we get that out to them, they'll probably enjoy it too. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel. If you're watching it on Nebula, follow the channel. Or go check out Nando V Movies, where I make long-form scripted videos, pitching movies, or casting movies based on comic characters. It's a lot of fun. That's all I got. Stay safe, and I will see you next time.